Hey there, welcome back. So today we're gonna to be adding to our particle effect that we created last time, an animated sprite effect that goes with it. So we kind of have this multi-layered effect that we're getting when we destroy our pieces. So stick around and let's dive right in. Okay, uh, let's dive right in. So today we're going to be making a, another explosion effect, only this one is going to be made from an animated sprite instead of being used from a particle effect. I like to have more than one way that you can have an effect. So the particle adds this nice bit of randomness to it, but if you have an explosion effect, you have a more controlled version of an effect that you know will be the same way every time. So what I want to do here is I want to make a new node and my scene is going to have a node 2D as the root. And then as a child of that, I'm going to add an animated sprite. Now the animated sprite comes up with this little uh, yellow caution warning as soon as you create it. And that's because you need to make a sprite frames resource. So down here, if you have animated sprite highlighted, you can see where it says frames is null. I'm going to right click there, create a new sprite frames. And then as soon as that's created, I'm going to click it and that's going to bring up this animation frames resource. And the animation frames resource is used for an animated sprite versus using an animation player. And you would want to use an animated sprite versus a regular sprite with an animated animation player when your sprite's animation is chopped up into individual images. If you're using a sprite sheet, then it's going to be best to use a uh, regular sprite with an animation player. I know it's confusing, but animated sprite individual images, uh, sprite with animation player, sprite sheet. Uh, if you guys can, can think of it that way, I think it would be good. So I'm going to change this default. I'm just going to call it explode. And then this is the animation. I'm going to change the speed to, I'm going to make it 12 frames per second. Now, uh, in my art folder here, I'm going to make a new folder. Uh, I've already added to the itch.io assets folder some effects. So I'm going to call this effects. I'm going to open this up. And then the itch.io folder um, that I have, so let's see, game assets, my stuff, where is it? Match three assets. There we go. Uh, I have particles and effects. I have a couple different uh, particle textures, and then I have some effects that I'm using, and I call them explode one through explode seven. So I'm just going to grab those. Um, those blue ones in the background are an alternate version I was testing out, but I like this version more. So I'm going to grab these seven images. I'm going to put them into my effects. And then I'm just going to grab all of them, just one through seven, by holding shift. I'm going to pull them all into uh, my animation player here. Now, as it is, I have seven frames. I want to go up a few frames, though. Uh, so I want it to kind of hold on this longer one. In order to have the frame play more than once, I'm going to grab it here and just pull it in again in between. There, I want you, I want you over here. I swear I did this earlier. Oh well, okay, I guess. <laughs> Alright. I 100% swear I did. Alright, so I'm just going to, oh okay, move before, move before, there we go. So I want that to be there, and then I want it to hang on this one for a little bit too. So I'm going to drag that in, move before, nope, oh, okay. I was highlighting the wrong one, move before, and then I want it to hang on the last one again. So that gives me nine frames, 12 frames per second. Um, so to see what it's going to look like, I'm just going to go to the animated sprite and click playing. It's a little bit slow, so maybe I'll do... Uh, let's say 16 frames per second. Uh, back over to the animated sprite. Cool. So that's kind of the effect I wanted. I wanted it to look like it was imploding just slightly, and then I wanted this multicolored explosion so that I can use the same explosion for all of my pieces. So I'm going to turn playing off. I'm going to go to my Node 2D here. I'm going to add a new script. And uh, this script I'm going to put in the scripts folder. I'm going to call it... Uh, animated explosion. So, animated explosion. 
Um, okay, and I'll create that. Now, what I want to do is, by default, I'm going to have the playing variable of the animated sprite off. But as soon as it comes into the scene, I want to have it start playing. So I'm going to grab the animated sprite. I'm going to do that by using dollar sign animated sprite because it's a child of this node. Dot playing equals true. Uh, I can get rid of this process delta function. And I can get rid of all of these variables up here. And then I'm just going to connect the... So on the animated sprite, there's a bunch of signals that come with it. I want to grab the animation finished signal. I'm going to connect that to the node 2D. And then when the animation is finished, I just want to delete this from the hierarchy. So Q free. And then I get rid of this little pass statement here. All right. So I'm going to, oops. I need to rename my node before I save it. So I'm going to call it um, animated explosion. And then I'll save this scene. I'll put it in my scenes. Save. Cool. I'm going to go back to my game window here. And I want to call this animated explosion the same way that we called the particle effect. So uh, I'm going to go to my grid script. And I'll go into distraction free mode here. I want to find where I created the effects. So there we go. And then I want to create another var. We'll call this animated effect. And then this is preload resources, scenes, animated explosion dot tscn. All right, and now I already made a generic method that creates the effect. So just to remind you guys what I did with that. Um, I've got this make effect right here method that needs an effect a column in a row. And so then I just create an instance of the effect, set its position, and then add it as a child. So if I go to where I made the particle effect, I'm going to do another one for the animated explosion. So make effect. And the effect I want to make is the animated effect. And I want to make it at column I, row J. And yeah, I think that's all I have to do. So I'm going to save this. Um, let's hit play here. All right, so if I get a match. So there we go. So that's the effect. It's a little big right now. I think I want it to be a little bit smaller. And maybe I want it to play a little bit slower. Maybe I want to go back to 12 frames per second. So I'm going to go back to my animated explosion here. Let's go into distraction free mode. Animated sprite, frames. I'm going to go back to 12 frames per second. And then um, I'm going to make my, uh, my animated sprite itself. I'm going to change its scale. So transform scale. I'm going to make that, say, 0.75 on x and 0.75 on y. To make it just a little bit smaller, let me save my scene here. Save my scene here. There we go. I'm going to hit play. Um, let's test this out. Yeah, I like that. It's got a nice, it's got a bit of juice to it. The particle effect could use some work, I think, but I like the way the animated explosion works. I think it's, uh, I think it's doing what I want it to do. So, uh, there we go. We've got two different kinds of effects. Now, you could make this even more effective by adding a um, sound effect, which we'll get to soon enough, sound effects in here. But yeah, I think this looks kind of good. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask him in the comments down below. Otherwise, you can follow me on Twitter to find out when I post new videos. You can join my Discord. Tons of really good people there. Uh, everybody's willing to help. Um, I'm there pretty much every day. So yeah, I hope everybody out there has themselves a wonderful day. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving a like, subscribing to the channel, or telling a friend who might be interested. Also, please consider following me on Patreon. For as little as a dollar a month, you can earn access to tangible rewards, like 
early access to videos, backer-only videos and series, polls for future topics, streams, and even individual tutoring sessions. You can find a link to that in the description. And as always, have yourselves a wonderful day.